drugs. How easy to do, do drugs. It's crazy, man. I haven't tried it. It's I, cra I, easy, crazy life of just non-stop drugs with me. I love the drugs. I can't get enough of the drugs. Any drugs. Drugs in my ass, drugs in my mouth. Just give them to me. <laughs> We have seen the petition yeah, for it. it. I've heard. I like Antichrist. I like it lyrically. I mean, it's so, it so doesn't sound like us, though. Like, it was, it, it, it was a really weird time. Our manager is, like, his favourite song ever. He always wants us to play it. We, we might play it. Right. <laughs> might do. Ready for a new scandal? Rimmel London's new scandalised mascara. For the most arresting lashes. The bolder, the better. The new Max Density Brush gives obscene coverage. This means trouble. Three times the collagen and keratin creates a high volume scandal. A girl would do anything for dangerously thick lashes. Do your lashes demand attention? Guilty. New Rimmel London Scandalized Mascara. The bigger the scandal, the better. Get the between. London look. Yeah. Oh, and, and I can't make that happen. Okay, it's the eyes though. It's the dark hair, blue eyes. That's what people in my country are a big sucker for. All the fan fiction starts writing itself. So I, I saw your mum made the uh, rounds, Maddie, with uh, Jared Leto. Is that right? Oh, that yeah. Your mum? That makes her sound a bit like a prostitute. Which oh, isn't my God, case. no. See, this is where the she language got a picture. Happened. She got a picture with him. Yes, yes. She didn't make the rounds. I'm sorry. And then... <laughs> That I was sleeping with Rashida Jones. Do you know who that is? Rashida Jones, the girl she's in I Love You Man. She's Quincy Jones's daughter. <laughs> I'm not even I'm probably not even allowed in the same room as Rashida Jones. If you're interested, Rashida Jones, I am so up for that. <laughs> <laughs> I am more than up. She's definitely watching this. Rashida Jones is a dream, and I'm not going out with her. It's bullshit. But people yeah. <laughs> and how would you pronounce? We think it's. Uh, yeah, that's too. I said that was too that's that's aggressive. Probably too aggressive. Well, it's kind of like. It's like. Uh, yeah, it's like. Oh, it's kind oh. of like, um, a dissatisfaction with your with yourself and your and your feeling. You know that. Oh. Okay. That regret. That, why did I say that? That wasn't even true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have those every single day. Mm, yeah. Um, uh, what was the first song that really sparked the like got the record moving for you guys? The I don't think I told. I didn't, I didn't tell any of them. I was. I didn't know I was going to make out with them. I don't yeah. even. I just did it. You just did it. That wasn't a planned moment. No. <laughs> None of my make out sessions are ever planned. <laughs> Hello, we are the 1975. This is our Vivo Ask Reply, where we are going to answer some of the questions off our Twitter. So here's the first one. Adam, what is it? It says, at Headbutt Styles, would like to know, what has been your favourite venue to play at? In the world? Yeah, in the world. I you. Hong Kong for me. Blasting. It wasn't a venue. Well, it wasn't a venue. 
so I'm subverting the question slightly, but... I think Glastonbury was better than Hong Kong. I know, but it's subjective, it's my opinion as well. Many men wish death upon me. And we just slagged off Pep Bar. Did I? Yeah. In the last interview? We're not going to slag well. him off. I, I don't even care about Pitbull. Why is everyone talking about Pitbull all the time? Not until he's had feet Pitbull. Yeah, that'd be it. Hi there, I'm Kat Corbett. We are live from the K-Rock Coachella house and I am joined by a Matt and Adam from the 1975. Hello. Hello. Good you, hello. you don't have to applaud. <laughs> it's fine. Thank you. you <laughs> well, you showed a lot of ambition and, and drive, which was three years ago. And then now, obviously, well, you have had a bit of success since then. Mm. So, how do you look back at that, at that first record, and then the period straight after? How do I perceive it? Yeah, I mean, I was, I suppose, I was kind of right. Not like I was right, but I was right to believe in in, in mm. what I believed in. I put a lot into this new record, mm. and it's a different record. Sure. Because I think it's more concise and it's more believable. I think it has more of a voice mm -hmm. because it happened over a short period of time. The first album was kind of this something that was an amalgamation of years and stuff that I'd written when I was young, like 18, 19. Mm -hmm. Robbers, like I wrote when I was 19. Okay. So, so yeah, I, I don't. Um, I don't see it as like a juvenile record, mm -hmm. but I see it as a naive record. And that naivety has been replaced with a kind of sense of knowing on this record, like knowing who I am. All these negative things of my behaviour, mm -hmm. but when will I change them? Will I this? Oh, can I be this? Whereas the new record is, you know, it's more about self-acceptance and cultivating that. 